Hello and welcome to another Cactus Hill adventure. This video will show the Upper Muley Twist Canyon Trail where you can hike, bike, or drive up to the Strike Valley Overlook. After that it's a hike about nine miles to the rest of the northern part of the Upper Muley Twist Trail. This is pretty self-explanatory. There's a parking area for passenger cars after this area of the trail road it's basically four-wheel drive highly recommended uh, so go from there you can also I'm sure hike obviously and then bike this trail as well and it should uh, it should be a relatively easy hike and bike there is some difficult sections as you can see you have to navigate through uh, but any four-wheel drive vehicle with a little clearance can do well on this road even maybe even a two-wheel drive truck with a little clearance and placing your wheels and paying attention to where you're traveling uh, could probably do it as well but uh, four-wheel drive would be best and again with a little high clearance As you may have seen in the opening screen in the map there, it's about three miles of this road trail slash hiking biking section of the trail to get to Strike Valley Overlook. Uh, Strike Valley Overlook out to uh, the water pocket fold, which you'll have a view of to the east, is about a half mile, so one mile round trip. It's a definite, definite uh, bucket list type of trail. The views from there of the water pocket fold are, are unbelievable. Uh, just well, well worth the trip. Um, as I go through this video I'll speed up some of the sections to about one and a half times speed. So uh, again just so I wouldn't have to give you a longer video and you still get the idea how the canyon looks. And I've had some comments that people enjoy seeing the entire trail as much as possible of it as, as I can provide you. And I like it too when I watch other people's videos. I like seeing the whole trail to see what we're getting into. So anyway, that's my philosophy on showing most of the trails when I do these rides. And uh, we'll go from there. Some of you may be asking right now, is there a lower Muley Twist Trail since we're on the upper? And yes, there is. It's in the same area. It's in that area where Bird Trail comes from the west to the east and intersects uh, the Nottam Bullfrog Road. And the Bird Trail switchbacks are just east of here. And before you start on those Bird Trail switchbacks, that's where the lower Muley Twist Canyon Trail starts. That is only a hiking trail. And I understand it's, uh, it's pretty strenuous. It's not an easy hike about 24 miles in length and the Park Service recommends that you do at least one overnight. You can do it in a day trip but they recommend uh, at least overnight two or three days. I will include some links uh, in the write-up for this video uh, for the lower and upper Muley Twist Canyon trails. Again the uh, lower Muley Twist trail is basically hiking only. And while I'm on this subject, there are no ATVs allowed on this upper Muley Twist Trail. Uh, and I, that goes for all national parks. Uh, check your national park before you enter to find out. But uh, that's my understanding that uh, any place in Capitol Reef National Park, there are no ATVs side by side allowed. Also, uh, one item of note on bicycles, uh, I'm understanding that there's they're having a challenge with electric bikes and what they're going to classify those as. Uh, so far, human powered are allowed on a lot of the trails, but uh, electric bikes, not sure. We've had some damage done to the Red Cliffs Desert uh, Reserve by electric bikes. Uh, they act a lot like motorcycles, uh, internal combustion engine motorcycles. So I uh, don't know what's going to happen with the rulings the National Park Service or where they're going with that. But just be aware, check your uh, National Park or State Park to find out what the rules and regulations are for those.
as you saw earlier in the, uh, the video on the opening screen uh, this is near the intersection of the Nottam Bullfrog Road and the Bird Trail and the Bird Trail switchbacks. The Nottam Bullfrog Road runs north-south uh, and from Highway 24 to the north near Capitol Reef National Park or near the entrance to Capitol Reef National Park. It's about 32, 33 miles to the Bird Trail Road and the first 15 or so are paved and the remainder is uh, gravel dirt and it can be washboardy towards the end of the summer. That's what we experienced uh, the first time we took the trail. But uh, it's been pretty good since, but that one year it was really uh, washboardy. So if you have the ability to air down on the Nottam Bullfrog Road, that would be probably uh, recommended as well here to air down a little bit on this trail. As you can see, there's a lot of rocks and your tire placement needs to be accurate and uh, also, there are some uh, parts of the trail where it looks like you can go through the wash and they've created a bypass. So please take the bypass whenever that happens. There's probably reasons why they made that bypass because maybe the wash was getting torn up. Not sure, but uh, that's also recommended when you, you do this trail. Uh, use whatever bypass they provide. As far as hiking, we only ran into uh, four people hiking. They were in a group on our way back and uh, they were just uh, having a good time. Wasn't a difficult trail to walk or hike. Not a lot of elevation gain either way. So, and it's a beautiful canyon. So a hike would be recommended if that's what you're into. As you can see, some of the trail road is pretty nice, nice and wide, uh, pretty easy to navigate. Other parts, again, are a little rocky and require some tire placement to get through. One thing to remember is, as you can see, we're traveling in a wash, so be mindful of the weather, what the conditions are in the area for the day you're planning to travel. Uh, monsoon season is late summer in this area, and some of you may have already seen the video in Capitol Reef National Park uh, that happened last summer. There was a, a family of, I think it was five, mother, father, three kids had to take a helicopter ride out of the canyon because uh, there was so much water coming through and luckily they found a high point in the flow in the wash and were able to put their vehicle up there and be safe in it but again they had to take the helicopter ride out to safety so again be mindful uh, these are this is a back country and uh, these washes can be dangerous uh, with a lot of water in them
There are a few uh, features in this canyon that would be of interest. Uh, Peekaboo Arch, when you're traveling north on this trail, is to the east. It's not all along the trail, it's in the, uh, the rocks. Uh, again, to the east, you'll be able to see it briefly on this trail. Also on this trail, on the uh, western side, is a Cheerios double arch. Yes, the Cheerios double arch. Uh, we show a picture of it at the end of the, uh, the video. We do a few slides of the, uh, to show some beautiful pictures of the area. And then there's a couple other just unnamed at this point that I, I don't know the name, but there are another, some more geological features that are quite interesting. As you can see, some of this canyon gets pretty narrow, so you can imagine the velocity of the water traveling through here during the monsoon season. So again, be careful and watch out. For, watch the weather, check your weather report before you go. Also in this area is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, was the Bird Trail Road, which leaves out of Boulder, Utah. This road is off of uh, Highway uh, 12, and that's another scenic route, uh, Highway 12. So if you ever have a chance to get on that road and go through there, it's a beautiful drive as well. That's paved the entire way, so anybody can travel on that one. Another couple of places that are interest along the Bird Trail Road is the Wolverine Loop and it's about a 26 mile loop that you access both ends from the bird trail so it's a nice trail beautiful area it's a little rough on the eastern side of it the western side is not too bad but the eastern side is a little rough still four-wheel drive would be uh, the best for that road as well so uh, check that one out we'll probably do a video here in the next uh, week or two on that one also, uh, Singing Canyon is along that road in Long Canyon. So, uh, Long Canyon is also a very beautiful section of the Bird Trail Road. And again, Singing Canyon is within the Long Canyon. And I've already done a video on that one. So, uh, I'll put a link to it at the end of this video if you're interested. Beautiful canyon, just a short walk off the trail. And if you have a musical instrument, bring it with you and play it. It's, the acoustics in there are, are wonderful. As you can see so far, this road, there's nothing real technical about uh, four-wheeling on this road. Again, it's just tire placement. Make sure that you pay attention to the rocks. If there's a sharp one or some tree limbs or something that might have some sharp points on it and may do some damage to your tires. But other than that, you just got to pay attention and make sure you navigate well. Again, just uh, there are a couple of bypasses uh, out of the walk. You can take those uh, when they're offered. bypasses I was talking about.
as you see on the left there, there's a cable across a couple of posts. I'm sure the road probably goes back a little farther, but that's probably for the Forest Service folks or their park rangers, etc. So, uh, you know, don't go on it. They don't want you to go on that. Here we're pulling up to the basically the end of the upper Mulee Place Trail for driving. That's where the Stripe Valley Oval Road starts here. And we'll pull up to the post here and park. There's a couple of signs ahead. We'll zoom on those here in a second and show that it's about nine miles uh, to the rest of the upper Muley Twist Trail. Here's a sign marking the Strike Valley Overlook Trail. It goes basically due east. Like I said, it's about a half mile, pretty easy hike. Uh, there are some rocky parts of it that you have to kind of follow the cairns to get through the canyon. But basically it empties out into the Strike Valley Overlook, so you're not going to go wrong or get lost. There's a picture of the water pocket fold. Uh, the, again, the pictures don't do it justice. This is the Henry Mountains in the distance there. And the water po pocket fold in front of you. Again, the water pocket fold. Beautiful, beautiful area. This is the Cheerios Double Arch I was mentioning earlier. Uh, it's one of the more significant uh, geological formations in the area. There's a random cave. Thought it was pretty cool looking. Another one. Don't know if there's any names for these, but I thought they were pretty cool looking. We went up and hiked around up in there and took a look. Well, anyway, uh, the video's ending now, and I hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, and remember, you won't know if you don't go. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it.